Welcome back. This is section 4.5, exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're going to use some of those properties of logarithms um, and exponential functions that we looked at before. And we're actually going to use those to solve some equations for certain variables now. Okay, so example one, we want to solve this exponential equation. We got 5 to the x equals 125. So anytime you can get the same base on both sides of your equation, that's going to be the route you want to take here. So since I noticed that 125 can be rewritten with a base of 5, that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to keep my 5 to the x, and I'm going to rewrite 125 as 5 to the third power. Now since I have the same base on both sides, now I know the exponents have to be equal to each other, and so that tells me that that x value has to be equal to 3. So if you can get the bases the same, then we can set the exponents equal, and that's going to give us the value of our variable this time. Now the second one here, we've got 5 to the 2x equals 5 to the x plus 1. This time the bases are already the same. They're already 5, so now we can just set the exponents equal to each other. So I'm going to take the 2x from this exponent, set it equal to the x plus 1 from the other exponent, and now I just solve for x. So I'm going to get all my x's together. We subtract x from both sides. That's going to give us x equals positive 1. Now you can always take these values and substitute them back in just to double check your answers if you want to. This one will be 5 to the 2 times 1 is equal to 5 to the 1 plus 1. That's 5 squared equals 5 squared, which is true, right? And same thing for the previous one. If we had substituted the 3 back in, that would give us 5 to the third power, which is equal to 125. All right, now, we also have some equations where we cannot get the same base on both sides. So notice here we have 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to 7. There's no way to make both of those bases look the same. So what we're going to have to do here is use our logarithms now to get the x value out of the exponent. Now, it's up to you whether you want to use a common log or a natural log. We just need something that we can put into our calculators. I'm going to use a natural log here. I'm going to take the natural log of 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to the natural log of 7. So I've just taken the natural log of both sides of that equation. Now we can use our properties of logarithms. So remember, one of our properties tells us that if we have an exponent inside of a logarithm, we can move it out to the front as a coefficient. So that x plus 2 there actually gets moved to the front of our logarithm. We have x plus 2 times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 7. Now, at that point, we actually want to distribute so that we can get the x by itself. So our next step here is going to be distribute the natural log of 3 to everything in parentheses here. So we're going to have x times the natural log of 3 plus 2 times the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 7. At that point, it's just a matter of getting x by itself. So I have a 2 natural log of 3. I can move that to the other side. We're going to have x natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 7 minus 2 times the natural log of 3. Now to get the x by itself, I just need to divide both sides by natural log of 3, which means I'm dividing everything over here by that. And so when I do that now, I'm going to have x equals the natural log of 7 minus 2 times the natural log of 3 all over the natural log of 3. This is my solution now. And I'll notice I never put this in the calculator to actually get a decimal, okay, because this one wanted an exact value, and so we leave everything in natural log form. So we have x equals natural log 7 minus 2 natural log of 3 all over the natural log of 3. That is an exact x value. Now part B says we're going to use a calculator now to find the approximate value, and we're going to round that to six decimal places. So at this point, we would go to our calculator, and that's why I said we want to keep something that we can actually put in the calculator. So natural log of 7 minus 2 natural log of 3. And make sure you calculate all of that together first, and then we're going to divide that by the natural log of 3. Okay. And if we do that to six decimal places now, this should give us x equals negative 0.2283. 
eight, seven, five, six. And again, just make sure you group the numerator together in this case. Make sure you do that subtraction first before you divide by the natural log of three on the bottom. And that's how we get that answer. So just pay attention in WebAssign, especially with your homework. Uh, make sure you notice whether it wants an exact value, which is what you would do in part A, or if it just tells you to round to a certain number of decimal places, then we can just put in the calculator and get that decimal. All right, so if we want to solve this equation now, again, our goal is to get x by itself. In this case, I've got an 8 as a coefficient of my e, and so the first thing I want to do is actually get rid of that 8. So I'm going to divide both sides by 8 first. So that's going to leave us with e to the 2x is equal to, and then 20 divided by 8 should give us 2.5. Or five halves if you prefer the fraction. Now, again, to get that x out of the exponent now, I need to use a logarithm to do that. Since my base is e this time, I'm definitely going to use a natural log because I know the base of the natural log is e. So I'm going to take the natural log of e to the 2x, and then I'm going to come to the other side and take the natural log of 2.5. Now, remember, one of our properties of natural logs told us that if we have the natural log of e to some power, it's just going to be equal to whatever this exponent is. And that's because the base of the natural log is e, and the base of this exponential is also e. So that natural log of e just cancels out and gives us what's in the exponent. So now we're going to have 2x is equal to the natural log of 2.5. And then our last step then to get x by itself, we're just going to divide by 2. And so when we do that, we end up with x equals natural log 2.5 all over 2. And again, that would be an exact value. If WebAssign asks you to round it to a decimal place, then you would just put natural log of 2.5 divided by 2 in your calculator. Again, make sure you take the natural log of 2.5 first and then divide that by 2, right? So we're not dividing the 2.5 by 2, but the entire natural log by 2. All right, so again, we want to solve this equation. We have e to the 3 minus 2x is equal to 4. Now, this time our base of e is already by itself. There's no coefficient in front of it. So I can go ahead and take the natural log of both sides as my first step. We're going to take natural log e to the 3 minus 2x equals the natural log of 4. Again, we have this natural log of e with some exponent. Our properties from our previous sections tell us that's going to be equal to whatever this exponent is. Now on this side, I have 3 minus 2x is equal to the natural log of 4. Again, I just need to get x by itself now so I can subtract the 3 to give us negative 2x equals natural log of 4 minus 3. And then we're going to divide both sides by the negative 2. Again, make sure you divide the entire right-hand side by negative 2 when you do this. So we have x equals natural log of 4 minus 3 all over negative 2. Now, if you want, some people don't like to leave negatives in the denominator, right? So if you want to get rid of that negative, just distribute it to each of the terms in the numerator now. So that would give us a negative natural log of 4, a positive 3, and then our 2 in the denominator would be a positive. So just know I would accept either one of these final two answers here. Um, but if you don't want the negative in the denominator, just make sure you change both signs in the numerator to make that denominator positive. Now, this one also asks us to solve graphically. So I'm going to switch over to Desmos now and show you how we would do this. If we're trying to solve an equation graphically in general, we're going to graph the left-hand side as one equation. We're going to graph the right-hand side as a separate equation. And then we're just going to try to figure out where they're equal to each other. Okay? So
So in Desmos now, I'm going to graph e to the 3 minus 2x. Notice here we need the entire 3 minus 2x as the exponent. And then I'm going to graph 4, that was the right-hand side of that equation, as my other equation now. Okay, now this needs to be y equals just so it'll actually graph the line. The first one you didn't have to put y equals because it actually had an x in it, but if you do y equals, it's the same equation. Right, now, what we're trying to figure out is where are these two equations equal now, right? Because that would make the left and right-hand sides equal. And notice there's a point right here where they're equal to each other. Now, since I'm trying to solve for x, I'm only looking at the x value. And if you were to take the negative natural log of 4 plus 3 and divide that by 2, you would see that the decimal approximation of that exact value that we got is actually equal to this 0.807 this time. So Desmos is not going to give you exact values, right? That's why we need to know how to solve algebraically. But if you're just looking for a decimal approximation of a solution to an equation, graphing will give you that. Okay, so you just graph the left-hand side, graph the right-hand side, and then just find the point of intersection for those two equations. So again, this right here, if we were to put it in the calculator, would be approximately 0 0.807, which is exactly what we just saw on the graph there. Okay. All right, example five. We want to solve the equation e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. Now, notice this time we've got an x in the exponents of two different terms. So what we're going to have to look for this time is, is there any way that we could actually factor this one so that we could actually solve for that x value? Well, what I noticed this time is I actually have something that's almost like a quadratic. It's just that my exponents happen to be the x values and my bases happen to be e's this time. But I can actually factor this as two binomials. So I have to think about what's going to give me e to the 2x. Well, remember when we multiply, we actually add exponents. So if I take an e to the x and an e to the x, when I multiply those together, I'm going to add the x plus the x. That's going to give me e to the 2x. Now I'm going to look at the factors of 6, just like I normally will with any trinomial. In this case, I know I want to get a negative e to the x in the middle, meaning I want a negative 1 as my coefficient there. So the factors that I want to use are going to be 3 and 2. And because I need a negative 6, I know the signs need to be opposites. I need the bigger value to actually be negative this time to give me that negative e to the x. So it's going to be minus 3 and plus 2. Now, once we factored it, now we can use our zero product property and set each one of those factors equal to zero, just like we would any other factors. So we can say e to the x minus 3 equals zero, and e to the x plus 2 equals zero. Okay, now, if we solve this first one, we're going to add the 3, so it's going to give us e to the x equals 3. And remember, to get that x out of the exponent now, we need to take the log. Because it's a base of e, we're going to use a natural log. So we'll take natural log of e to the x equals natural log of 3. And then remember, our property tells us the natural log of e to some power is just equal to that exponent. So this gives us our x equals the natural log of 3. This is one of our solutions to that equation. Now we'll do the same thing with the e to the x plus 2 equals 0. Move the 2. That's going to give us e to the x equals negative 2. Now, you might already notice at this point, if you remember what the graph of e to the x looks like, it's always positive. We're never going to have e to some power equal to a negative value. So there is going to be no solution to this. If you don't recognize that and you keep going, though, if you take the natural log of both sides, you would end up with natural log of negative 2. Well, this tells us now we definitely can't take the log of a negative value. You can only take the log of a positive value. 
And so this right here is going to give us no solution. So whether you recognize that at the e to the x equals a negative value, or when you try to take the natural log and have the natural log of a negative, either way, there is no solution to that equation. So our only solution to this one is going to be x equals natural log of 3. All right, so now again, we've got 3x e to the x plus x squared e to the x equals zero. Again, I've got two terms, both with an x in the exponent. So the first step is I want to see if I can factor. Now, this time I've only got two terms, but I do have a common factor between those two terms. So e to the x is what they share, so that's what I'm going to factor out. So I'm going to bring out e to the x. It's going to leave us with 3 and I also notice here that there's an x in common, and so I can bring out an x also. So that's just going to leave us with 3 plus x this time. Now we can set each factor equal to 0. Now in this case, x is a factor, right? So we have to say x equals 0. e to the x is also a factor, so we set that equal to 0. And then 3 plus x is our final factor, so we set that equal to 0. Now, x equals 0 is already solved, so we know that's one of our solutions. And if you notice that I plug in 0 for x there, that's going to make both terms 0, 0 plus 0, 0. That checks out. Now, this next one, e to the x equals 0. Remember that we have a, a horizontal asymptote for our e to the x function at 0 e to the x is never actually going to cross the x-axis, so it's never going to equal zero, so this is going to be no solution. But again, if you took the natural log of both sides and you tried to put natural log of zero into your calculator, again, you would see that this is no solution. We can only take the log of positive values. Okay, so no negative values, no zeros, only positives. And then our other piece here, we're just going to subtract the 3. That's going to give us x equals negative 3. Okay, and so that's going to be our other solution this time. So our two solutions to this equation are going to be x equals 0 and x equals negative 3. So always look for those common factors first, and then sometimes you'll be able to factor out the common factor and then still factor further, right? But then once we get it completely factored, set each factor equal to zero, just remember that with these e to the x's or just any base to the x power, um, we have to have positive values there. And so a lot of times we're going to get no solution for pieces of these for some of these factors. All right, so now we want to solve this equation. Okay, and so notice here it's it's kind of split onto two lines. Let me rewrite the whole thing. So we've got log x squared plus 1 equals the log of x minus 2 plus the log of x plus 3. And that way it's all in one line. Right now, the first thing I'm going to do here is try to get all of my logs together on each side. So my log of x squared plus 1 is fine. I'm going to leave that alone. But then I'm going to use properties of logarithms on the right-hand side here to combine those two. So remember our property said, as long as you have the same base, both of these are common logs, we can actually combine addition using multiplication. This becomes a single logarithm. And then we're going to have x minus 2 times x plus 3 instead. Now, at that point, because I have the log of x squared plus 1 is equal to the log of x minus 2 times x plus 3, I know the stuff inside the logs must be equal, so I can drop the logarithm. So this is going to give us x squared plus 1 is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 3. Now we just have to solve. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out the x minus 2 times the x plus 3 on the right-hand side. So if we use FOIL here, that's going to give us x squared. Then we'll have plus 3x minus 2x and minus 6. Combine your like terms here. So that's going to give us x squared plus 1 equals x squared 
plus x minus 6. Now we just need to move everything to one side, right? So we have a quadratic here, kind of, right? We've got x squares on both sides. When I do that, though, if I subtract x squared and x squared, those are going to cancel each other out. And then I can actually subtract the 1 and subtract the 1 here. And so that's going to give us 0 equals x minus 7. So now we can actually just get x by itself because our quadratic term goes away, add 7 to both sides, and we're just going to get x equals 7. That is our only solution to this equation now. And again, if you're ever in doubt of whether you did your steps correctly, you can always go back and substitute it in. In this case, we have 7 squared plus 1. That gives us 50. And then we'd have 7 minus 2 is 5. 7 plus 3 is 10. Remember, we're multiplying those, though, because of the addition of logarithms. And 5 times 10 would give us 50. So we'd have the log of 50 on both sides. And so these would be equal. All right, so now we've got a logarithmic equation and we want to try to solve for x. So what we're actually going to do with these is remember that we can rewrite natural logs or logs in general as exponential equations. So the base of the natural log is e. And now I can use my property that says, well, if I rewrite this in exponential form, it's going to be e to the eighth power is equal to this x right here, right? So we take the base raised to the power on the right-hand side, should be equal to the value inside the logarithm. So we have e to the 8 equals x, and we're done, right, because we were trying to solve for x, and so now we know that x is equal to e to the 8. And do the same thing with the next one. Okay, so this time the base is 2. I'm going to take that 2. I'm going to raise it to this power over here. And I'm going to set it equal to everything that's inside the logarithm. So we have 2 to the third power is equal to 25 minus x. Well, this time we've got to get x by itself, so we're going to simplify first. 2 to the third is 8, equals 25 minus x. Now I can subtract my 25. When I do that, that's going to give us a negative 17, equals negative x. And then my last step then is to divide by the negative 1 to get rid of that negative there. And so now we get 17 is equal to x. So anytime you have a logarithmic equation like that, try to get the log by itself first. Then we can rewrite it in exponential form and then just try to get your x by itself. All right, so again, we've got a logarithmic equation. Now, notice this time we've got other stuff on the same side with the logarithm. So my first step is going to be to isolate the logarithm, get it by itself, so that then I can rewrite it in exponential form. So I'm going to move my 4 first. So that's going to give us 3 times the log of 2x is equal to 12. Now, I've got a coefficient of 3. I want to get rid of that, so I'm going to divide by it. So that's going to give us the log of 2x is equal to 4. Now that I've got my log by itself, now I can rewrite this in exponential form. Remember, the common log has an understood base of 10. So I'm going to have 10 to the fourth power is equal to 2x. And now we just simplify that, get x by itself. 10 to the fourth power is a 1 with four zeros. 10,000 equals 2x. And now we just need to divide by 2 to get the x by itself. So that's going to give us 5,000 equals x. So again, always get your log by itself first, then rewrite the log in exponential form so that you can get x by itself. All right, so now we want to solve this both algebraically and graphically again. 
So my first step is because I've got two different logs, I actually want to combine them since they're on the same side. So I'm going to use that multiplication property again to rewrite this as the log of x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form because I've actually got a single log now. Again, we have a common log, so this has a base of 10. So we're going to have 10 to the first power is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now this time I can actually multiply out what I have on the right-hand side. So we're going to have 10 equals x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2. Now, because I have a quadratic, I need to set this equal to zero, get everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract my 10, and I'll combine like terms. That gives us zero equals x squared. Negative x plus 2x is a positive x. Negative 2 minus 10 is going to give us a negative 12. Now that we've got a quadratic and we have it set equal to zero, now I can refactor what we have there. This time we're going to have x and x to give us the x squared. Factors of 12, we need a positive 1x in the middle, so that tells me I'm going to use a 4 and 3. I need my signs to be opposites to give me a negative 12. I need a positive x. I'm going to make the bigger value positive, smaller value negative. Now we can set each factor equal to 0. So we have x plus 4 equals 0 x minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 4, we get x equals negative 4. The 3, we get x equals 3. Now, one thing that we have to be careful of with these logarithmic equations, especially when we have multiple logs and we've combined logs, we have to go back and check our solutions to make sure that they actually work. Now, the one thing generally that causes these not to work is that we end up with a negative value inside of a logarithm, and we've already said that we can't take a, a, a log of a negative value. Well, if I take this negative 4 now and I substitute it back in up here, we're going to have the log of negative 4 plus 2 plus the log of negative 4 minus 1. Notice here negative 4 plus 2 gives us the log of negative 2 plus the log of negative 5. We can't take the log of negative 2 or the log of negative 5, so this solution right here does not work. We call this value extraneous. Okay, so notice it has the root extra, right? So it's like an extra solution that does not actually work so we call that an extraneous solution. Now notice here, the reason it looks like it could work is because if you were to combine those logs now, negative 2 times negative 5 would give you a positive 10, but unfortunately the original equation was two separate logs, so both of those logs have to work, so we can't have a negative inside them before we multiply. Now, let's double check the 3, right? Because just because a value is positive doesn't mean it won't work. And just because a value is negative doesn't mean it doesn't work. Okay, So that's why we have to actually plug them in and see if the value inside is actually negative. I'm going to substitute the 3 in this time. So we'll have log of 3 plus 2 plus log of 3 minus 1. This time, that gives us the log of 5 plus the log of 2. Both of those are positive values. When I multiply them together, I do get 10. Okay, so this one does work. And so this is our only solution to that logarithmic equation this time. Okay. Now, they also asked us to solve this graphically. So I'm going to go to my graph in Desmos now. We'll sketch this, and we'll see what the solution looks like. Okay, so our left-hand side here, we have the log of x plus 2 
plus log of x minus 1. And the right-hand side here is just y equals 1. Now, notice we have our logarithmic equation here, the red one, and we have our linear equation, that horizontal line at y equals 1. We find the point of intersection. Again, we're only looking at the x value here. x is equal to 3. That's the only place where these two graphs intersect each other. So that's why it's useful to actually take a look at your graph, because if you had gotten solutions of negative 4 and positive 3, and you look at your graph and say, well, wait a minute, they only intersect one time, what happened? Hopefully that'll remind you, oh, yeah, I can't have a negative inside my logarithm. That value is extraneous. The only solution this time is the positive 3. All right, example 11. Okay, so now we want to solve this equation. We've got x squared equals 2 natural log of x plus 2. Now, what I noticed this time is I've got an x on the outside of a logarithm. I've got an x on the inside of a logarithm. I'm going to show you here that there's really no way algebraically that we can get our x's by themselves. Okay, because our first step, remember, would be to get the natural log by itself. We would divide by 2, so that would give us x squared over 2 equals the natural log of x plus 2. Our next step, then, would be to rewrite this in exponential form. So remember, our base of our natural log is e. So we would take e to this power is equal to everything inside. So we'd have e to the x squared over 2 is equal to x plus 2. Well, now I have an e with an x in the exponent. So my next step would be to take the natural log of both sides to get the x out of the exponent, but that's just going to take us right back to where we started. Okay? So we kind of end up in this loop of trying to get the x out of the exponent of the e, but then trying to get x out of the natural log, and we can't do it because we started with an x on the outside and on the inside. So our best bet in this case is actually going to be to solve this by graphing. Okay, so I'm going to graph both sides of this equation, and then we're just going to find a decimal approximation of our solution. So I'll switch over to Desmos again. Again, our left-hand side here is just x squared. Right-hand side is 2 natural log x plus 2. Notice this time we actually do have two solutions to this one, two places where these intersect. I'm going to find this point of intersection here, this point of intersection here, and again, I only care about the x values. This is x equals negative 0.712, and our other solution is x equals 1.601. So if you ever end up with one of those situations where you feel like you're in a loop, where you keep taking a natural log and then rewriting it in exponential form and you can't seem to get the x's by themselves, then graphing is going to be your best bet. Okay, so graph the left-hand side, graph the right-hand side, and then just find points of intersection. Those will be your solutions at that point. Okay, so in this case, we won't be able to find an exact solution. We'll only be able to get decimal values. Okay, so you'll only ever be asked in these cases to give an approximation. And there are the two solutions, negative 0.712 and positive 1.601. And again, just to kind of reiterate, because this is a good example to show you this, just because we get a negative x value does not mean it doesn't work. Because if I substitute negative 0.712 in this time and I add 2 to it, I'm actually going to end up with a positive value inside my logarithm, and that's perfectly fine, right? So that's why I said don't just assume that negative values don't work. It's once we substitute them in, we need the value inside the logarithm to be positive, and in this case, that would happen. All right. 
Example 13, okay, so now we're gonna go back to our compound interest stuff. So we have a sum of $5,000 invested at an interest rate of 5% per year. We wanna find the time required for the money to double if the interest is compounded semi-annually and then continuously. Okay, so we're gonna do one of each. All right, so if we look at semi-annually, remember our formula for that is A of T equals P times one plus R over N to the N T. So let's think about what we know this time. So we know we're investing $5,000. That's gonna give us our P value. We know the interest rate is 5%. So that tells us our R value is 0.05 because we have to change that to a decimal. And we're trying to figure out how much time is required. So we're actually looking for T this time. We wanna know how long. And it's if we're compounding semi-annually, which means our N value this time, we're compounding twice per year, so N equals two. So the only thing I'm missing now that's keeping us from being able to solve for T is what our A of T value is. Well, notice here, we want to start with $5,000 and we want our money to double, which means our A of T then needs to be twice whatever we started with, which means we're gonna set that equal to 10,000 this time. And so now our equation becomes 10,000 equals 5,000 times one plus 0 0.05 over two to the two T. All right, now, at this point, we need to try to solve for T. And remember, our T is in the exponent, meaning we're gonna have to use a logarithm to do that. But before I can use my logarithm, I need to try to get the exponential part by itself first. I'm gonna divide by 5,000 on both sides. So that's gonna give us 10,000 divided by 5,000 is two equals, and then I'm gonna go ahead and simplify what's in my parentheses here. So we have one plus 0 0.05 divided by two, should give us 1.025. That's being raised to the 2t. Now I can use my logarithms to get t out of the exponent. Now it's up to you whether you want to use a common log or a natural log. We need something we can put in the calculator so we can actually get a t value. I'm going to use natural logs here. So we'll take the natural log of 2 equals the natural log 1.025 to the 2t. Now remember, we can use our properties of logarithms to move that 2t to the front. We'll have natural log 2 equals 2t times the natural log of 1.025. And now we just need to divide to get t by itself. Well, in this case, I've got a 2 and a natural log of 1.025. I'm going to divide by both of those at the same time. Come over here and do the same thing. 2 natural log 1.025. That gives us our t value. Now be careful here. Make sure that the 2 natural log of 1.025 is all grouped together in your denominator when you do this division. We'll take a natural log of 2 divided by the quantity of 2 natural log 1.025, and if we do that and we round it, in this case, let's go with two decimal places, that'll give us 14.04, and remember our T value here is always measured in years, so this would be just over 14 years for our money to double. Now, the next piece of this one is we want to think about if it was compounded continuously instead. So this time we have to use the other formula, A of T equals P times E to the RT. Remember, that's our continuous compounding interest formula. All the values here stay the same. So our A of T, again, we want our money to double, so that's 10,000. Our principal is still 5,000. 
E is just E, and our rate is 0 0.05, and we're still looking for T. First step, still divide by 5,000, so that's going to give us 2 equals E to the 0 0.05 T. Again, we need to take a logarithm to get the T out of the exponent. Natural logs make the most sense this time because our base is E. We're going to take the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of E to the 0 0.05 T. Again, we can use that property of logarithms that says the natural log of E to some power is just equal to that exponent. So now we have natural log of 2 equals 0 0.05 T. And this time we just have to divide by the 0 0.05 get t by itself and so if we do that we have t equals again go to your calculator take the natural log of 2 divide by 0 0.05 and that should give us to two decimal places 13.86 again our time is always measured in years here this is 13.86 years so notice, it is slightly shorter than the previous one, right? It took us a little over 14 years if we were compounding twice per year to get to that doubling. Um, but in this case, we can do it in slightly under 14 years if we happen to be compounding continuously. All right, so that's all we've got for that section. Um, as always, let me know if you have questions. Send me those questions in WebAssign as you have them. Come see me during student hours if you need to. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.